Hello campers, welcome back to a Thursday edition. Well, I told you last week I was heading out of town tomorrow and we decided to go ahead and do it today. So we'll see if anybody shows up and has a couple of questions for me and if anybody shows up and I'll answer the questions that were missed last week and start my vacation early. So make me, make me work a little bit. Come on, let's see it. At any rate, thanks for joining us today. Uh, and we're going to swing through and look at the questions that I missed last week, plus any announcements. And as you can, or if you come and join us each week, you know that we are still holding a new giveaway every week of the Monster Energy AMA Supercross Series this week. And if you're a rider, you know what these things are. This week, we are giving away, away a pair of Alpine Stars Tech 10 Super Vented Boots. <laughs> Even if you don't ride, go look at these things. I mean, I, I hung up my, my spurs a long time ago, and hell, I want a set <laughs> just to look at them. These things are works of art. If you want a chance to win them, they're about 600 bucks, I believe. You need to go to partzilla.com forward slash LP forward slash PRMX to enter. And I bet you my guys down in Florida will drop a link in the chat so you can go in there and do that. There's no charge to do so. And that particular giveaway is going to end at midnight tonight, so you still have time to enter. All right, and, and after that, we're going to start taking entries to win a lock and load strapless motorcycle transport system from Risk Racing. And I actually already ordered this thing, and it's like in, my, in my office. And I've never used that system before, but I was going to put it together and shoot, just see how it works. It looks cool because what it does is it allows you to really maintain your machine in one position without having to stress out the suspension because it grabs it from what I can tell on the foot pegs, which is a really cool design. That way you're not forcing those forks down and weakening your, your springs. I mean, it's just a better way to transport a machine. And uh, once I, once I play with it a little bit, maybe I'll do a how to video and give you a review of, well, what I think of it, but it looks to be a really nice system. Uh, anything made out of extruded aluminum, it's probably going to be pretty good. All right. I'll answer that later. That's over in our Skype chat. Um, Duffel Honda had asked me last week, and I, I kind of circled around, but I wasn't sure, but I have the answer now. He said he had a, uh, or has, a CRF 450R 2005. Good grief. I should know every nut and bolt. Well, I do know every bolt on that one. That was rebuilt, but now it has pumped the transmission oil into the motor side. Would that be a bad crank seal, or would you would you to the balance axle? All right. Most of the time, it actually happens in the opposite direction. It forces the uh, well, actually, it actually forces the motor oil side out to the transmission. It could go either direction, but more than likely, it is the main shaft seal or the main seal on the right side. Now, could it be the balance? possibly but either way you don't have to split your cases of course to get to these so it shouldn't be that difficult to uh to replace them and if you're going to do one go ahead and do them all because if one's going to fail the other one cannot be far behind it and let's face it uh 2005 was not yesterday but there's nothing wrong with having an older motorcycle otherwise we wouldn't have built ours which by the way is has made its way up to maine uh to ken and i would imagine if it has even remotely decent weather, he's going to take it for a first spin and maybe send us a video of uh, his uh, first time. First time hit, he will have started it. So we'll be looking to hit out uh, hear from him. Nook Man had asked me if a bike was dropped, do I need to reset a tip over switch? For the most part, it's going to reset itself. Now I know there's a couple of different manufacturers, and I believe Goldwing may be one of them. Once that switch goes so far, it'll latch, and then you'll have to actually reset it. For the most part, they should just swing like a pen, pendulum back into position without physically having to go in there and reset anything or replace it. CM Pest Control, 
I think he was trying to get me to do a, a name drop for him. Uh, it's okay. For all your pest control needs. Hi, I have a Honda CRX 350 2005. Funny thing, so do I. Went to start it today and I have no ignition light and it's blowing the main 30 amp fuse. Any suggestions? Maybe I did answer this one last week. That, my friend, is an indication of a direct short. Um, if you don't have anything turned on and you're putting in a, the, the main fuse and it's popping it like that, something is definitely going to ground. So my first order of business would be to start picking over your, your wiring harness and make sure that hasn't been chewed on because I'm betting this may have been, maybe put it left in a barn, maybe an outside storage area. It's been cold. Critters tend to make nests in our machines and they love using insulation off of wires. Figured that out. Not sure why. But if and when you're able to run this down in the future, you may want to spray it down. You're going to think this is a little nuts. With Tabasco, they don't like that. So then worst case, you can add in some uh, some poison. Maybe that would detour this these little vermin from attacking our machines. All right. Let's see if we're starting to get a few questions. Oh, and we are. Y'all are kicking for a Thursday. Let me scroll back up. And uh, we'll get to going. Maddie is asking me, hi, a 2002 GL1800 gearbox is making clunking sound. Oh, boy. When I change gears, it does it more when the motor is normally working temp and less when it when it's cold. Sorry for my bad English. Greetings from Finland. No. Apologize for my bad speaking English. No, not, it's not a problem at all. All right. Making clunking sounds. Is that just when you're changing gears? Let's start off with something simple first. Um, I had a, I think it was an 07 VTX 1300. I bought it used. When I first got it, it shifted like crap. I mean, it was just really notchy and every gear change was like, what? And I, th I thought, I'm going to have to go in and rebuild this stupid transmission because somebody obviously has been really hard on this machine and uh, done it dirty. Well, it turns out they were using an oil that I don't want to mention, um, but it wasn't what I preferred. And I said, yeah, just for the heck of it, I'm going to change it over to the oil that I like to use, which is the eight, that gold HP fluid uh, uh, oil from Honda Performance Fluids. And after the second change, all those noises went away. So before you go diving into the, the gearbox of that GL1800, which is not fun to drop out that engine, believe me, and you better have three friends uh, over your shoulder when you do it because it weighs a ton, go through a couple of oil changes with that HB4 semi-synthetic oil in the gold bottle and see what that does. I mean, come on, that's maybe $15, $20 worth of oil, and it's, a, it's, worth, the, it's worth the shot. And uh, it worked for me. I kept the bike for another three years. I never once had to open up the cases on the thing. And I was so certain that I was. But occasionally, I like being wrong. That was one of those times. Panagiotis. Hi, uh, John. Good Thursday. Hello, Panagiotis. How are you doing? Are you, have you had a chance to ride your machine yet? I'm just glad it's running for you again. Calum is asking me, hi, John, how do I stop a Honda TRX 450 backfiring when I release the throttle? All right. Sounds like you have an aftermarket exhaust on it, don't you? More than likely. Best way to probably do this is add fuel on desale. And by the easiest way to do that with throttle off or when the throttle is off is on the, uh, the air fuel screw. If it's set at the stock, I think it's one and three quarters. Go ahead and take it out to two turns out and see what that does. So we're basically trying to drown it a little bit. Otherwise, it's trying to hit stoichiometric and backfire. So give that a shot and see what it does. Tony Polaris 570 SP Touring. Cool. I don't have to ask what you're riding. Hi, John. What do you recommend as a replacement shock, shock suspension bushings for a 2000? 19 Polaris 570. Makes sense. Sportsman Touring. 
I don't know of any um, outside manufacturers that make a uh, of aftermarket replacement. I'd say go back with the same thing. I mean, uh, well, three years, that is wearing it out a little bit quickly, but I, that's really the only suggestion I can make is just to go back with the, with the stock because I don't think anybody makes anything for that. I mean, you could get something custom made, you know, have it ground down, you know, have a solid mount, but I don't think you want that. It would beat you to death. Kalon came back at me. I have tried the air fuel mix. Is the is it the needle length? Okay, well, if you've already tried the air fuel, I, I guess it could be the needle, but on full off throttle, there shouldn't be really anything on the main circuit anyway. It should be all, only on the idle circuit. Be careful messing with the, your, your main needle because it's range. If you're looking at your RPM range here, you've got your idle circuit, which is your slow jet, and then you've got an intermediate jet, and then you've got the main jet. So the main, it really shouldn't be doing anything down here for a full throttle off in, on, the, on a decel mode. Maybe open up a little bit more on your air fuel and see where that gets you. One, because I don't want you to overcompensate by going with a different needle height and either A, making it lean out, which is the worst case scenario, or either just getting so rich it's just slobbering all over the place and, and won't even want to get up on the pipe all the way, so to speak. X1, good one. Okay. <laughs> Ashant is asking me, hi there, I have a R6 2006 model. Okay, I have a new battery standing for two years. Huh. So now I charge the battery up, the bike starts right up, but when I cut it off and try to start up again, it does not start. As a, a common tale, um, you, I have did a, a, a how-to video as far as testing and seeing if your batteries are good or not. Uh, guys, if you would drop that in there, because there's a big difference in between a battery having just a charge and then the ability to start. So yes, you might be able to get it to charge and it'll sit there and hold it at, you know, 12.4 volts. But as soon as you put a load on the battery, she falls all the way off. Or in your case, it won't even maintain the voltage. And it certainly does not have the capacity to deliver the amperage needed to turn over your machine. Um, a battery that's been uh, sitting for two years, more than likely it's sulfated and its health is probably going to be next to nothing. <sighs> so yes, you will need a new battery, unfortunately. Trick to keeping a battery to last more than two years, if it's going to be sitting up, put a battery tender on it. Now, I know that may be a little bit painful initially, you know, buying a 50 or $60 battery tender, but how much the batteries cost, especially for an R6. It's going to be a sealed type. I guarantee it's going to be more than that. And it will greatly extend the life of your battery, especially uh, when you let it sit in the off season. Angry operator. Okay. A 21 ZX6RKRT. Which fuel ignition tuner would you recommend? There's so many of them out there now, and you know I'm probably going to run back to my um, uh, my normal, which is going to be Power Commander. Uh, they've been around the longest. Now, granted, it's not a true tune. It is basically what they call a piggyback configuration, where it's manipulating um, the uh, the O2 sensor information, and it's guiding the uh, the ECU to make changes as much as it can. Um, I think you, you're you're getting plus or minus uh, either five or eight percent on your fuel trims. It's about as much as a, a stock ECU you can deal with. Now, do you want to go full blown and do a, like an ECU unleashed where you're hacking into it? Uh, that's when you need to have somebody who knows what they're doing because if you get in there at that level and make some mistakes, you lose engines. And every tuner has gone through that, myself included, uh, although not in the motorcycle realm, on the, uh, the car side. Um, hurt my soul to have to rebuild that engine again. Hey, but it happens when you start pushing the envelope. Best thing is to find somebody that's, or find a company, if you're going to go that route, that has been in it for a while. And for lack of a better term, they've 
they've already done your tune. They have your bike, they've got that particular exhaust, that particular cam, whatever setup, guarantee you somebody's done it and uh, just put the, the can tune. Now, it'll be a little bit on the reserve side, but you don't have to go through the financial hardship of pushing that envelope just a little too far and getting burned like I did. <laughs> but hey, it happens. Christopher Rhodes promised last time I asked, nitrous scooter. I went and looked at that, and <laughs> what, a, what, a, what a bizarre couple of guys. I thought it was interesting, but they never really show it running. I mean, they showed that, you know, the engine revving up, but the, it was snow on the ground and ice, so they really couldn't ride it yet. I want to see what it's like to do a rolling start on that one, and then they hit it, because they're basically just spraying it in there uh, mechanically, if, if I remember correctly. But uh, kudos for coming up with something different. Uh, <laughs> it was interesting. I wasn't completely focused on it because, well, I was at work, so I was kind of watching it halfway out of one eye. But um, <laughs> interesting. It was interesting, to say the least. But I did go watch it. I think it was on a Honda Cub 50 or something like that. It was on a very small one, even smaller than that thing. But yes, I did go watch it. Panagiotis, yes, I did um, on the road. On the road. <laughs> I hope next week the track is going to be open because I have some brand new tires. Well, very good. Uh, if you would, you know, drop us a, a, a message on Facebook, if you would. I'd like to see a picture of you on your steed in Sweden. I think that would be interesting. So, um, yeah, send it out to us, if you don't mind. Aces Moto, any recommendation on deglazing rotors for new brake pads? Thanks. Oh boy, I've run into this before. And gosh, once they get glazed, it is so difficult to get them cleaned up. I've, I've actually done it before, and it was like a sanding disc off, though. But it was not a sanding disc, but it had the, it looked like one and it fit on a sander. It's been like three years ago, and I can't remember the, uh, the manufacturer that I used, but it was a time consuming process. The, uh, the only other way I can think of is to get a super aggressive set of um, brake pads. Um, the ones that I've used before, uh, Hawk made them. They were, this is for a car, of course. Uh, they were what they call the blue series. They don't even, I don't think they really carry that stuff because they were so corrosive. Uh, the dust, if it if it got on your rims, and especially if it got wet, it would eat into the aluminum. They, they, they were that aggressive. But with those, we'd you know, bring it up to speed and just hammer down on it. And because they were so aggressive, they could eat off or clean off the uh, the glazing on them. Now, I'm sure that there are some very high aggressive pads out there for your particular motorcycle application. Now, if you want to really be sure to, you know, to get all the glaze off, you may want to buy a set of, of super aggressive pads just for that. Now, would you want this for street use? Oh gosh, no, uh, it would be a nightmare. I mean, unless you're a full blown racer and you're at the track. And if you are, <laughs> you're going through uh, rotors just as fast as you are brakes, let's be honest. But that's about the only way, uh, two ways I know to deglaze rotors. Christopher, glad you did. Yeah, that was that was a fun watch. MC, hey John, thanks for all the help. You literally fixed my bike over the internet. Well, glad I could help, MC. I'm curious which machine was it that uh, I helped you straighten out. Panagiotis, yes, I can do that 100% on the same message that we have been talking through. Yes, and I believe you've been communicating with Hank. So I'll uh, send it through him and... I will not be here next week because, uh, as I said, I'm heading on vacation in a matter of hours. Well, in 24 hours, I should be on a boat down in Belize. But when I get back, I want to see that picture. Ash Ashanth is also asking my R6 when I ride the bike slow at 4,000 RPMs. It makes a funny noise at the head. If I go faster, it goes away. I'm thinking the tensioner is that normal. Thanks. I think you're probably right. Uh, if four grand, I, I guess it really doesn't matter, the, uh, the RPM is it, hitting a resonance and that's where you're hearing something. And typically uh, when you hear it 
at like four, and then you may hear it again at eight and possibly even 12, that is either the tensioner or the chain guide or the chain may be getting a little bit too much slack in there. At any rate, it sounds like we need to, uh, or you need to go in and, uh, and, prob and probably replace all three as a set. The, the guides, the tensioner, and the chain itself. Uh, just doing one of the three, yeah, it'll it'll quelch it for a while, but it's eventually going to come back. All right, Nick is asking me, I recently ordered several parts for a project. How often are the online parts diagrams on your website reviewed for accuracy and or updated? Not a complaint, by the way, just curious. It's an ongoing process, but by all means, if you run into something that doesn't look right, send a message to our team because you know, our goal is to, to get it right. And if something's not right on a, a diagram, not matching up with the machine, especially, uh, we never want that to happen. The quicker we know, the faster that we can straighten it out and save uh, other people, including ourselves, a big headache. But yeah, um, drop us a line and say, you know, I was on this, I was on a 2006, you know, Honda TRX 400EX and the uh, the chain or the uh, the brakes that they used on or they they show on the drawings is the wrong one. I mean, let us know, please, if you don't mind. Hmm. Dennis Brooks, YFC 450R, five millimeter stroker, hmm. <clears throat> 520 cc, big bore, stage three cams, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, you went all the way. I can't find a dyno anywhere near me in Maine for ATVs. I ran it for 20 seconds and she's lean, of course. How do I dial it in without a dyno? Good grief. You've got, you've done so many modifications to this. The, the number of people that are going to have that particular um, map, if you will, is going to be few and far in between. And as far as finding a dyno up, up north, I would imagine that was be, would be difficult at all. Sure, there's plenty of dynos, but the, the real trick is <laughs> you need to have one of the twin drum dynos, which we used to have. Um, I, I sold it about three years ago it, to do it yourself. But once again, I would probably get, hit the forums and see if somebody out there has something close to yours and then just err on the uh, the rich side a little bit because as i'd mentioned earlier in this particular live stream you don't want to dance too close to that uh that lean line because it will get you in trouble mm. let me guys make a note of that and let me reach out to a couple of folks that i know that are really good with the 450 r's and then then they board and stroke let's see if we can help out dennis and maybe get him a uh a contact so so we can get that that thing rideable at least so hank if you would make a note of that that would be great but uh keep in mind dennis it'll be a little while because I, like i said i will not be here next week so it'll be the, the friday after that if i'm able to get in touch with the person i'm, I'm thinking of I don't, I don't want to throw out his name but uh he doesn't mind if i send him a question now and again Kyle Burkett, hey John, thanks for all the great content. What is the difference between chlorinated and non-chlorinated brake cleaner? <laughs> Which one is a better parts cleaner that uh, I should keep in my garage? <sighs> the chlorinated one's going to be better. The non-chlorinated that that is uh, 49 or um, 50 state legal. You can guess which state doesn't want you to use the uh, chlorinated. <sighs> Stay away, and I love the Honda stuff, but stay away from the one that has the white cap on the top. You want the one that has the um, the black. That's the one to get. That's, that's the one I, I go through a lot of it. I think it's chlorinated, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's that one over there, right there. I should even know the part number. I've ordered so much of that stuff. I order it by the case. You would think I own stock in Honda Performance Oils. All right, Gary Clark, are you aware of a faulty fuel sensor error Can-Am Outliner Max XT850 2022? 
forums talk about battery issue cables and whatever it is. Thanks in advance. Now, Gary, I had not heard of that one, but um, I do have access to the uh, the dealer website, and I can take a peek and see if there's any type of bulletin that Can Am is aware of, and then I can relay that in. Um, information to you so hank if you would uh, make a note of gary's let's see if uh see if we can get him some information on that from the dealership side but personally have i heard about it no i have not dennis says i have yet to find a map well, all those wild modifications that doesn't surprise me but we will we will try to find that <laughs> George Presley, Mr. Tally, plus a hammer is a tally whack? Question mark. Just kidding, of course. <sighs> that has been my nickname for ever. Even my high school teachers called me whack. <sighs> it's just uh, comes with the name. <laughs> so it doesn't bother me, not in the slightest. Um <laughs> I did try to find, or I was going to put a personalized tag on one of my cars. And uh, it's, uh, I use it the same name for most of the forums that I go into. It's uh, Twacker, T W A C K E R. Now, that really doesn't mean anything unless you know my last name. But there you go. But would you believe somebody in Georgia already had that plate? Bastard. <laughs> <clears throat> Dennis, awesome. I appreciate it. Uh, I'll be tuned in, tuned in as always. 3K motor itching to ride, but if it's not right, ask your guy if Vortex will plug and play that build. Appreciate all, all that you do. Not a problem. I'll, I'll see what I can do, Dennis. Hopefully we can uh, get you up and running. <laughs> Mike W., it's not Friday. Have a good weekend coming up. No. I, I told y'all last week I'm heading out of town tomorrow and I won't be able to broadcast from down there. Oh, there you go. There goes uh, 27 minutes. I'm going to call that close enough to 30. <laughs> All right, kids. Um, thanks for coming by and spending a little time with us, especially uh, spending some time with us and sending in some good questions. It makes my job fun really does and uh god willing i'll go down for a little vacation time and if the state department isn't looking maybe they'll let me back in the country and i'll be here in a couple of fridays and we will do this again until then everybody take care have a great week a great couple of weeks a great couple of weekends and we will see you in a couple of fridays <laughs> we'll talk to you soon have a great day